All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to open up by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Chakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopefully elect. And uh, today's lesson is going to be entitled, When it comes to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, it's not a matter of if, but when. You know, pretty much, you know, um, this is a title. You know, that came up on my head um, about a day or two ago. And pretty much I was thinking, you know, about, you know, pretty much everything the Lord said he was going to do. All right. He's going to do it. Now, ultimately, we don't know when, but we know it's going to happen according to scripture. So that's why the title of this lesson. All right. When it comes to Yahweh Bashem Yashai. OK, it's not a matter of if, but when, because ultimately it's not a question of. Uh, are these things going to happen if these things happen? Nah, it's, it's more so, it's more uh, uh, when are these things going to happen? Because ultimately, we're looking for these various different things and various different prophecies are to, to come to pass because ultimately, that's leading up um, to the kingdom of heaven, man. But um, without further ado, I want to start out in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, uh, the point is in three, but we'll start at the top. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am approved. So ultimately, what does a watchman do? All right, a watchman is on a tower looking out for danger. And when a watchman sees the danger coming, what does he do, man? He warns the people, okay? Like just how you know, the Lord said, what? That the Lord has made us a, a watchman into the house of Israel, man. You see? And we see the impending danger. All right, we see our right, Esau, all right, uh, uh, getting ready to uh, come down with great wrath. Right, that is the danger uh, we're uh, uh, warning our people of. And also, we're warning uh, our people to get right. All right, or else they're going to uh, partake in the nuclear destruction. Those are just some examples. Verse two, and the Lord answered me and said, "Write the vision and make it plain upon the table." So you know, when we're doing this, man, the goal is not to be too deep man the goal is to make it simple plain upon tables all right and like our uh like our elder anaba always says you know make it to where a five-year-old can understand it all right says that he may run that readeth it because also once you get this wisdom knowledge and understanding man your course starts right there okay all right your race starts right there and the goal is to what endure to the very very end and here's the point verse three says for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Right. Says for the vision is yet for an appointed time. So at the end of the day, all these various different prophecies that are written. All right. They're in within the scriptures. Guess what? There is a said appointed time in which the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai has intended for those prophecies to come to pass. All right. So once again, title of this lesson being when it comes to Yahweh Bashim Yashai, it's not a matter of if, but when. OK. It says, um, it says, uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. And ask me, how, how does, how, how, uh, how, how is it speaking, man? Through the various different signs that are taking place. Okay. Um, this is, uh, let's grab this in the book of second Ezra chapter, uh, nine, beginning in verse one. And says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to, excuse me, wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, then thou, then shalt thou well understand, slack you. That the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, right? So ultimately, when you would see certain things, or when you would see certain things come to pass, such as, you know, the earthquakes and uproar of the people, so on and so forth, that would be an indicator unto you that what? We are in the last days, right? So seeing all these things uh, um, that are uh, currently going on around in the world, that are happening all around us, right? It's not a matter of if the Lord is coming, but it's a matter of when, all right, the Lord is coming. All right, because ultimately, at the end of the day, according to Second Peter the third chapter, guess what, man? We're hastening that day. Okay, it says, in verse five, it says, for like is all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. 
It says, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder. And, you know, that word manifest goes into what? Show plainly. So, ultimately, the signs, all right, are there for us to let us know that, what? We're in the end, man. Okay? And, and you know, we're, we'll get into it, Lord, as well, Matthew 24, chapter. And when our Lord, Yahweh, was breaking down uh, certain things that would take place in these last days, he wasn't, you know, super, super deep, man. He made it plain upon tables. It says, um... It says, uh, uh, Second Ezra chapter nine verse six. Even so, the times, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs, and that's how the end is speaking, man, through effects and signs. Which ultimately, some of those signs are what earthquakes and uproars of the people, and we'll get more. All right, here soon, Lord's will. Okay, but jumping back to Habakkuk chapter two and verse three, it says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time." But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So at the end of the day, we know that these prophecies will come to pass. And it's not going to tarry. Because once again, we read at the top of this verse that what? That the vision says for the vision is yet at an appointed. Excuse me. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So the Lord has a set hour, set date, set minute in, in which certain prophecies are to come to pass. Which ultimately, these things are all going to be happening on Yahweh Bashim Yashai's time. Which is why the scripture said, what? It will not tarry. Right? Let's grab, um. Oh, this is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So ultimately, everything and anything that the Lord speaks shall surely come to pass, man. Okay, point blank simple. Let's grab this. Um, in the book of um Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. Says Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Right. So also at the end of the day, and once again, everything that the, that the heavenly Father Yahweh speaks will and shall surely come to pass, man. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And we believe that by faith, man, because this is what the scriptures say, man. You know, and um. Let's get this also in the book of Hebrews. I love this scripture right here. Um, Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, the point is in 18. Let's get uh, jump straight to the point. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the most high to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. And also what's the hope set before us? Our salvation. Okay, the kingdom of heaven. All right, the Lord said he was going to give salvation to his elect, man. You see, we just read that it's impossible for the most high to lie. See, so once again, all right, it's like you. Uh, once again, going back to the title of this lesson, uh, 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 when it comes to Yahweh Bashimi Ashai, it's not a matter of if, but when. Right, because also at the end of the day, everything the Lord speaks will and surely shall come to pass, man. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's grab this in the book of, um, Isaiah chapter 42 and uh, verse nine, it says, uh, behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. And what are some of those former things, man? Hey, the, some of the former things consist of what? Uh, the deliverance from Egypt, okay, uh, uh, the sacrifice of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, 70 AD, so on and so forth. All right, those things came to pass, man. And the Lord said, what? And new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them, man. And what is that? That is the exact definition of prophecy, man, because it means, because prophesying means what? To say before. See, so also the Lord here is prophesying or telling us of things, all right, that will come to pass before they come to pass. Okay, such as what? The mandatory implementation of the MOTB, uh, Jacob's Trouble. Okay, World War III. Okay, salvation unto the elect, man. You know, ultimately, 
These are things that we are waiting for. All right. Once again, all right, title of this lesson being when it comes to Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, it's a matter of if and not when. Okay. Um, let's see. I want to grab this intense heart. <laughs> this is um Jeremiah chapter 30. So like you. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 24 it says, The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it. So, ultimately, at the end of the day, we understand that the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, is going to perform all the intents of his heart. And ultimately, the intents of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai's heart is to what? Take down the heathens, all right? Take Esau out of rulership, right? Uh, put Esau and other heathen nations into slavery. And, um, and um, so like yeah, and uh, put uh, uh, do away with Esau forever, right? The intents of the Lord's heart, excuse me, the intents of the Lord's heart is to what? Save His elect, man. All right, destroy this wicked kingdom. All right, establish the nation of Israel. All right, forever, man. You know, and those are the things that shall surely come to pass. Okay, let's grab this in the book of um. Second Peter chapter three and um, verse nine, it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right. So it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, because ultimately at the end of the day, all right, whatever the Lord says, man, he's going to do, man. Point blank, simple. It says as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Man, that's dealing with the nation of Israel. But we understand that only the elect is going to repent in these latter days and come back to Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. Okay. Uh, let's grab this in the book of um, Isaiah, chapter 14, and. Um, Verse 27, it says, For the Lord of hosts hath purpose, and who shall disannul it? His hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? So ultimately, at the end of the day, whatever the Lord all right, all right uh, uh, says he's going to do, whatever the Lord says forth his hand to do, guess what, man? He's going to do it. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Ashad, is going to make sure it comes to pass. Okay? Now, once again, we don't know when it's going to come to pass, all right, but we know it's going to come to pass. All right, once again, going back to the title of this lesson, all right, uh, when it comes to Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, it's not a matter of if, but when, okay? And, um, it's a uh, Matthew 24 chapter, um, we'll start at verse 3. It says, And as he sat upon the mountain of olives, the disciples came unto him privately, privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? Meaning the end of this current age. Okay. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Yahweh shall, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So ultimately, well, you see, these are words in red letters. So these are the words of our Lord Yahweh Shai. So the Lord Yahweh Shai, he's pretty much breaking down what will be happening in the last days that will lead up to his return, man. Which is ultimately when Yahweh Shai returns, guess what? Then comes the salvation of the elect of the nation of Israel, right? So, also, we don't know exactly when these things, uh, when uh, the Lord is going to come back, right? But also, um, we can measure the times diligently by observing the times that we're in, by observing the said events that are coming to pass as we speak, such as the earthquakes in diverse places, uh, pestilences, famines, wars and rumors of war, so on and so forth. Now, uh, jumping down to uh, verse... Uh, verse 36, it says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, 
No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So ultimately, only the heavenly father, Yahweh, knows when he's going to send back his son, Yahweh Shai, all right, to deliver death and destruction on his wicked kingdom, as well as uh, saving the elect, man. Okay, but we know we're getting close by the various different signs that are taking place all right, in these last days. Okay, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, excuse me, as the days of Noe or Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be right. So back then during Noah's time, what they was, they was a uh, mocking Noah. Fulfilling lust of the flesh, man, doing complete wickedness. Okay. So Yahweh Shai said, just like as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when he shall return. And we see it, man. Wickedness is at all time high. Okay. All right. Now, uh, sodomy is at all time high. So on and so forth, man. People are more geared towards the flesh than uh, doing what's right. You know, in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, which only, which really the only ones in these times that can really do right in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai are Israelites, man. Okay, but point being that ultimately majority of the people of the world are caught up in the flesh, man, not paying attention to what's going on around them, which is why the day of the Lord is going to catch these individuals as a thief in the night. Okay, and once again, all right, title of this lesson being when it comes to Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, it's not a matter of if, but when. So we, we don't know, once again, we don't know exactly when. Okay, the Lord is going to return, but we can understand that it's close by observing what's going on around us. Okay, now I, I'm going to close out right there. I didn't plan on making this too long, but I pray that this uh, lesson was edifying to the body. And I pray that you got something out of this. And I'd like to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopeful elect. And Lord, as I see in the next lesson, till then, shalom.